there is a new player on the compact premium sedan market and that's the BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe. It could be an alternative to the BMW 3 Series, a little bit smaller here. It is of course a new competitor to the Mercedes CLA, which was pretty much alone on the market so far. BMW is tackling that now. And here on Autogefuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars, Thomas in front of the camera, Jonas behind the camera, will fill you in with all the details, exterior, interior and the driving experience today with the BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe as the sporty performance version M235i X-Drive. This will be a lot of fun, I can promise you and will give you all the details you need to know. It will be very interesting, especially for our friends in the US, because together with the BMW X1, this will be the new entry to the world of BMW for the US customers. This will be, so to say, the cheapest BMW, not the M235i, of course, the base version. Which ones are available? Tell you all about that. Now, in full HD, full screen, and full length, let's go. Please subscribe to us if you haven't done so far. And if you already subscribed, thank you so much. And a shout out also to our Portuguese fans today. You know, we have a very strong fan base here in Portugal and somehow they always love when we're here to film the reviews. Here, the BMW 1 Series or the 2 Series, they both get this very big front double kidney, although they are rather small vehicles. Again, in the US, this is now your compact segment entry into the BMW model range. In the US, you do not get the 1 Series. In Europe and also other markets, you do have the 1 Series. They share the very same platform. The M235i gets this meshed front double kidney. Otherwise, you have, for example, vertical fins in there. And in this case, you also have this high gloss shadow line. Usually the standard would be a cerium gray, so a little bit matter also, more gray in the, in the tone. Here in the shadow line you get more black nuances, just what you prefer. Then headlamps come with LED as standard, not only the daytime running lights, which are very beautifully done, but also the main headlamp unit and optional you can get adaptive LED as we're also having right here. Other than that, color-wise, we have a white car here for you today, but in the studio we also had a striking color called Snapper Rocks Blue Metallic. That was actually my favorite. 4 meters 52, 14 foot 8 or 178 inches is the length of the 2 Series Grand Coupe. That's 20 centimeters or 8 inches longer than the BMW 1 Series compact hatch, but they share the very same wheelbase. It's the same platform, front wheel driven, not so long front hood. And if you have the all-wheel drive, it is then front plus rear wheel drive on demand, like it is here with the M235i. The normal front wheel drive models and also the low all-wheel drive models, besides that one, that one here, they usually start with uh, electronic front control differential lock, so to say. So it's not a real one, but they use the technology of the BMW i3s. Very interesting to reduce a front wheel spin. And here in this perf performance model and performance model, you do get a true mechanical front differential lock. As for suspensions, you do start with the base suspensions with a normal model. Then you get the M Sport fixed suspension as standard in this one here, for example. 
but that's, you know, really rough. You can, however, go for the adaptive suspension optional, which we also have in this very car here right today. And we also recommend to do that. Also, 18-inch wheels are optimized for this adaptive suspension, a good compromise between comfort and sportiness. If you go for 19-inch wheels, you cannot go for the adaptive suspension anymore. Bear that in mind. Other than that, the beautiful design line here, you see here a very stretched roof line. It reminds us just like a small 8 series, so to say. Also here then with Hofmeister kink design elements inspired by older BMWs. Then this one, as I said earlier, has this shadow line package also with black side mirrors. Otherwise, this would be again in cerium gray, like in the M lettering here in the M235i. So either cerium gray or this black then. And then you also have the black window frames around. And today we also have the black wheels as a contrast to this white exterior vehicle color. So I think also design was on the exterior, strong shoulders here, a beautiful, elegant job. As for the market position inside the model portfolio, I think with BMW it's a little bit clearer here with BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe because if you think about Mercedes, they have the A-Class hatch, the A-Class sedan, then the CLA, even as sedan and shooting brake, and then they have the C-Class, and the CLA is the same length as the C-Class now. Hmm. Here with BMW, they try to differentiate a little bit more. So the 2 Series Grand Coupe is still shorter than the BMW 3 Series. And I think that's a little bit clearer as to where to position the car. Or well, what's your thought on that? In the rear, well, that's the thing where I have to think about a little bit. I found it very beautiful the front in the side profile. With the rear, I think it looks a little bit bulky because it's so you know, up right here in this area, and especially if you have the M235i in the shadow line with the additional contrasting black wing here in the top, I think it looks even bulkier. Also showing that to you later, I think it's more beautiful when it is in the vehicle color that it's a little bit more subtle, this additional wing. And together then with those two horizontal black lines, hmm, I'm not sure about that. The headlamps, however, slim and beautiful, that's quite cool. And then the lower part again with the black contrast here. Again, more cerium gray elements if you would stick with the base M235i without this additional package. And we have this you know, pretty massive outer exhaust ring and then the rear ones are on the inside, the outer just for beauty. There's also a difference to the smaller engines which have just real exhaust. You can also take a look at that. I think this is a little bit exaggerated here. Well, what's your take? So, as for engines, the one we have today, yay, hydraulic struts, is the M235i X-Drive, so the M performance model with all-wheel drive, front plus rear, 306 horsepower, 2 liter, 4 cylinder, and acceleration figure 5.1 or 4.9 seconds with the M performance package and always with the automatic gearbox but with shifting pedals. And the 228i in the US would be the main engine, the entry engine for the US, only available in the North American market, then with 230 horsepower, also X-Drive. And in Germany or in Europe, you could also get the entry petrol engine that is 218i, a 1.5 liter three-cylinder with 140 horsepower, that one, the only one also available with a six-speed manual gearbox or optionally automatic. And last but not least, there will be a 2.0-liter four-cylinder diesel, the 220D with 190 horsepower and also with an eight-speed auto. And if you want it a little bit sportier, you can go for some M performance parts. As you might remember from earlier, this front grille here for the M235i has this mesh design usually in cerium gray and then again because this of course also has the M performance package is here then also in the glossy black that's the same as with our main vehicle but here we have some additional parts for example there are some caps for the side mirrors in carbon fiber and special M performance wheels 19 inch as well and they even have special valve caps so very beautiful in the detail, for example. And in the rear, again, also with this shiny black scheme. So a lot of additional sporty elements. Of course, you can also stay with the base version. It's just if you want a little bit more individualization. And in the interior, we have, for example, special floor mats, also with the M Performance Batch. 
And then there's a unique steering wheel and performance logo there too, control stitches on the inside and Alcantara on the sides and not only at the grip pads but also a little bit more towards the inside, so a connecting Alcantara surface. Interesting, also a 12 o'clock marking in red and the top part and last but not least, in the very detail, the shifting pedals are also covered with carbon fiber then here in this case. And to show you some different variations, also different color. This one here is called Storm Bay Metallic. And this is also the M Sport package. So you can also get it with a lower engine version. So not connected to a high trim engine. If you want a sportier look, but don't want to spend the money on the M235i, for example. And in this M Sport package, you have those vertical fins in the front grille. This car also has these extended shadow line package. So in this case, we also have the glossy black frames around. And you can also see 19 inch wheels optional. But remember, 18 inch if you want to have the adaptive suspension because 19 inch will not work together with the adaptive suspension. And what I find here a little bit more elegant is when this additional spoiler here on the top is indeed in the vehicle color. So I think that's a little bit more subtle. Oh, what's your favorite? And seriously, I find these rather simple round exhausts just a little bit more beautiful than the other ones that maybe look more extreme from the, from the distance. So this is a simple solution and this is even just a 220D, but still a very nice exhaust, not only left, also on the right side. Here we have the slim, light and suitable car key. If you have the M Sport version or the M235i, you also have the M colors at the side. Yay! And keyless entry, when putting your finger here on those three stripes, closes or hand on the inside, it opens. And the beautiful thing is that we have the frameless doors here. So a typical coupe element although there's always a lot of argue between coupé hardliners who say there are only two-door coupés and coupé softliners who say there are also four-door coupés. <laughs> yeah, that's how it is. The only thing is here with the frameless doors that the door closing sound is not that good then. So that sounds a little bit weird because there's no real plop sound then when there's no frame around the, these doors. Then from the inside, soft touch right there. Then there's a dark decor element in this case. There's the optional Harman Kardon sound system. So there are three sound systems available overall. This here, the one with the 16 speaker setup. So this is the, the most speakers there are. Six, 10 or 16, 16 in this case here. Nice sound from that. Then the rest of the interior, we already know it from the BMW 1 series in the European market. You can see here the compact steering wheel, very good build quality, everything is very well done as for the buttons and knobs and so on. Soon more deals to all of the screens. Seating details in Europe, we start with a base seat, a normal comfortable base seat which is rather open and is available also with fabric surface. In the US you start directly with the sport seat which would also come with the M Sport model or with this model, the M235i. The normal sport seat has a separated head restraint here in the top part so it's not that one. The normal sport seat then either in Europe with fabric SensorTech mix, so SensorTech leather red on the outside, fabric inside or in the US, standard would be sensor tech for the sport seat, either in black or in beige. And that's also what you should go for in the US. Other than that, this optional sport seat with the integrated head restraint, so even for the M235i it is optional, is also actually pretty cool because it can still be comfortable. It's not necessarily less comfortable than a normal sport seat. The only thing is in US it only comes with animal skin service as we see here. However, in Europe we can get it with a nice Alcantara fabric mix that is sadly not available in the US. So if you're a US customer you should give a feedback to your dealer that you would 
have uh, would like to have it the way we already filmed it in our studio location. So that is actually the dream seat for this vehicle, but sadly not available for the strongest market, which will be the US. So I would say in Europe we go for this seat then with the Fabric Alcantara mix, and in the US we just stick with the base sports seat and pick a center tech, maybe even in beige, that brings a lot of light to the car as well. Both seats will be comfortable, yes. However, for tall people, a mid-size sedan will still be comfortable, more comfortable. If you're a little bit smaller, then it won't play such an effect. You have controls, in this case here, electric, up and down, for example, and front and back again, and also for the back part of the seat, um, and here also for side bolstering. Then you can already see there's the M235i badge for this sport model, and a nice detail is, also for build quality, here, this cubby hole. When you open it, ah, look at that. Soft dampening, hmm. That's why you would pay 60k for such a vehicle, won't you? <laughs> yeah, that's always the thing then. Of course, now with all the extras and stuff. Steering wheel can be adjusted in and out, up and down, very smooth process. That's also where I pay attention and really feel a connection to the build quality that the car is offering to me. And you can actually quite cozy and sporty position at the same time. Of course, everything in the front is like in the BMW 1 series, so there's no real difference to that. Headroom for me with 1m86 or 6 foot one is like this, plenty available for like 1200 or something extra. There's a panoramic roof available if you want to go for that. And of course it costs a little bit of headroom, but still, although the car looks sleek, there's an astonishing amount of headroom still left. Interior overview, good build quality here, everywhere soft touch materials, no matter what you touch. There's a sporty deco element, there are different stylings for that available for the two series. Then the climate unit is still manually to control with the screen right there, but that's good because I want to have something accessible also while driving. The only thing turning off and on the AC can just be done in the menu right here and not with a single button. Hmm. But they have some individualized hotkeys in the lower area and so cool to still have a real volume knob right there, even with a metal knurling around. In the lower area you have an inductive charging pad for your smartphone right there. Then there's a normal USB device and some cup holders, but they are not adaptive. Then you have this shifting lever, automatic gearbox always comes with this vehicle start stop and then there's different driving modes you can pick so if you don't want to use the touch screen you can also use this pad here turning and pressing or also using the touch area on the top part for writing an address but usually you would do that with the voice input but still while driving it's quite good to have this option still to control the infotainment system and then you have this leather red cover of the armrest and then you can put it up good build quality very well attached and under that is a USB-C device. Steering wheel has this heated function. This one also the M steering wheel with a little bit thicker grip. On the left side you have the adaptive cruise control. This is not a soft rubber surface, it's a more, you know, it feels good, it's a hard plastic surface but feels good in the quality. You know, past generations were a little bit soft rubber where that was diminishing after a while. On the right side you can control the phone for example, also some volume, plus and minus, and also the voice input you can activate right here if you don't use the activation word. So here on the left side you get these digital instruments, that way they come alive. Oh, even the white car is displayed in the middle there, pretty cool. RPMs go counterclockwise to make space for the GPS view in the middle part. Very clear to read everything. It also depends on the driving mode. When you put in the sport mode you have a red background for example. Vrom vrom. <laughs> and what's also interesting is you can still get analog gauges for this vehicle then with a smaller 5.1 inch screen but this one then the optional 10.25 inch screen that comes together with a bigger screen on the right side is then called BMW Live Cockpit Professional. Now to the infotainment system right here. It starts with the 8.8 .8 inch smaller screen would be like this. It's called then BMW Live Cockpit with the GPS included, which would be called BMW Live Cockpit Plus. 
And then the BMW Live Cockpit Professional is this one, 10.25 inch screen that comes together with the digital instruments on the left side. Then you have this bigger screen. You see it works where I touch and you also have a very good responsiveness, clear view. The GPS software is awesome, it's one of the best on the market, definitely always guides us very precisely. And then you have some car settings here, for example. Everything is quite self-explanatory. You have sport gauges, for example, when you turn on the engine, then you have G-forces and also a power output here, for example. So some things to play around with. Um, let me just put the map once again a little bit bigger. So, and then what about the media connection? So there's no cable connection for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Android Auto is not available at all. There's just a wireless connection for the CarPlay when you are in mobile devices. Here the um, Android phone can only connect via Bluetooth. The iPhone then with Bluetooth or with Apple CarPlay. You have to pay, put connection mode in Apple CarPlay then, not BMW iDrive. And also in the settings, you have to activate Apple CarPlay right here. When those two settings are activated, then the Apple CarPlay can actually be established. And then when you would put the menu up, it would appear right over here as a separate layer. It does not at the moment. I tried for 15 minutes and that's the thing with the wireless CarPlay. Sometimes in so many BMW, I did the connection with Bluetooth and then it appeared um, just a matter of a minute. In this case, couldn't get it to work. Maybe at a later stage when I start up the engine once more, I did a reset already. So that's the thing. With the cable CarPlay connection, it always works. The wireless connection, sometimes it does, sometimes it's not. If you get it to work and sometimes at some point, and you will, then of course it's just cozier that you have everything wirelessly and just put it in, in the inductive charging platform and that's it. And a nice detail is also this frameless mirror. Good view to the rear and also pretty elegant. And you can get this optional head-up display, for example, for current speed, allowed speed, even some GPS directions, and it's really crystal clear and sharp and in your line of sight. It's a very good option, I think. And some examples for the voice recognition system, which works here in the operating system 7.0 in a very nice way. Remember, if you have the smaller screen, you'll get the 6.0 system, the base system without the natural voice input. This here, the 7.0, just in this 10.25 inch BMW live cockpit professional. <laughs> so we can either activate the button at the steering wheel or say, hello BMW, hello BMW, what's the weather? Currently it is rainy in Kishkaish with a temperature of 15 degrees. That's the weather and also like the both voice and the screen or I press the button again and say drive me to Lisbon. All right, our next destination is Lisbon. Or you can also set a personal activation word. You can name your car, so to say, or you can name you just your voice input system. And today I picked something very special. Hey, sweetie. Hey, sweetie. Do you love me? Of course, you're the spark to my plug. Oh, you're the spark to my plug. Hmm. So, but I wonder, we have a petrol engine. What would she say if it would be a diesel? Hmm. If you got that one, you're a true car enthusiast. And rear camera put in reverse gear, then we have that. Helping lines adapt according to that, good resolution. You have a park assist and also a reversing assistant. That means when you go inside somewhere and see, oh, I cannot get inside, I need to get outside, but in a reverse way, then you just activate it. And it basically saves the way the car was driving and steers back automatically. It's a pretty impressive feature we've shown you already with the seven series or eight series. Now let's get in the rear. Also for the rear doors, the beautiful frameless design. So that's of course an emotional feature. Then take a look at the rear right there. It looks, you know, not that roomish of course, but there are compact vehicles that are even smaller in the rear. The typical the rear bench design by BMW that looks somehow well integrated, so to say. And you even have some reasonable 
cup holders here in the front, so, or like say bottle holders. And the cool thing is, I mean, yeah, it's an expensive vehicle, so we can expect it, but good that we still have a dampened material, so soft material also at the inside of the doors at the rear. The sport seats do have an impact of the legroom, so you can see the back part here is quite voluminous, so that reduces the legroom a little bit. However, they do have a soft background and not a hard shell at the back part, so when you hit it with your knees, it's then again still somewhat okay. Good that they thought of that. So let's take a seat inside and see how that one plays out. Of course, a shoe tap. So, and it does work for four tall adults closely, um, but works. And again, since this one is more voluminous, it's good that we have a soft background. The normal sports seat would have this hard shell right there, but then you can you have a little bit more space so it's not not too bad actually so headroom wise um yeah when i lean backwards i do hit my head on the ceiling but that way it's still okay so with the one series hatch for example it's a little bit better and also with a three series sedan so a little bit of a compromise but still somewhat okay so to say um yeah i mean you get the picture again with me one meter 86 or six foot one in the middle part is also theoretically possible. It's not too hard. It's quite okay. Um, but headroom-wise, it does get quite close then. And again, if you do not have animal skin su surfaces, but a fabric, which we have in Europe, it's also, again, softer a little bit. So it's also better for the comfort. Here in the middle part, you can get this armrest down with adaptive cup holders. And you also can apply the ski hatch right from here to load things right through. Other than that, flipping these seats, you have to unleash them from the trunk. Last but not least, here in the rear, we do have two more USB-C devices here in this back part. 430 liters of capacity for this trunk. It's of course longer than with the BMW 1 series, but you have this shallow opening, sedan alike. You have some more space below it, and you can also remove this cover. But of course, it's somewhat practical because it reduces this loading sill. Well, and the measurements as for the total length it is 95 centimeters in length, it's about a meter in width, and the height here is about 45 centimeters. So that means when I put a standard backpack in here, it can actually stand upright, so that does work. What else we can do is flip the seats, so we have to unleash them from here and here. Then I have to go around and then I'm able to flip these in the one third, two third split actually. So here we go. So that's it. But we can also just use this ski hatch. That's then our maximum setup here for today. And should you wonder about the length to the very front seat then, that's the last thing we can show you today with this trunk. So here we go. And that's then one meters and 70. Welcome to Thomas's Active Driving Lounge. We put the shifting lever into the manual, uh, um, manual mode, sports mode and traction control. And then we can also hit the launch control. We are at the moment not just alone here. Brakes, throttle and let's go. Well, that was only 100. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that went quick. So it was first a little bit downhill, then a little bit uphill. Um, so that should have evened it out. But it's just around five seconds. And wow, that was really impressive. And the wet conditions here at the moment. And that means the all-wheel drive is working very well. So I did not experience any form of wheel spin or slip. That was really amazing. And since it's wet, I'm also putting the traction control in again 
And again, please do not attempt to do this. Just do it on the closed circuit or something. Just doing it here for demonstration purposes and really safe when no one is around and so on. So now to the normal driving behavior. Again, I put in the traction control in again because of the wet conditions. However, I'm still in sport mode that we get a little bit more of this exhaust note. And also in the sports mode, the throttle input is being reduced. The gears are turned up higher. Yeah, there's gesture control sitting in here when I'm just um, using gestures. Um, other than that, this really good grip here on the steering wheel and the steering ratio is really extremely well thought out. So it's a very natural driving feeling. We're here on one of our favorite testing routes in Portugal. And what we can do here is compare it also to other vehicles we've been driving. And that's really awesome. So I can really say, you know, how does this one behave to other vehicles because I've driven this exact road with a lot of different other cars. And it doesn't feel too different from a normal one series or as we um, um, drove it in the 135i, which is technologically speaking the same vehicle. They also share the same wheelbase. Maybe it's a little bit different as for the weight balance and so on. And this car is so well to control and the steering setup, steering handling and so on is even better than with the BMW 3 Series. So they are somewhat competing in the sedan segment. Yes, if you think about that, the 3 Series, of course, a segment above that and a little bit longer. But then again, this one here has the better package because of the shorter hood and it is actually more fun to drive because it's a little bit smaller, it's a little bit lighter and so on. Yes, you don't have this rear-wheel drive punch out of the corners. That's somewhat missing, especially if you would just have front-wheel driven model of that. However, since we have the all-wheel drive here, when I'm accelerating out, we also have more torque on the rear wheels. And that is really helping to reduce this effect of you would feel it just be front-wheel driven. And just want to show you when we... Um, uh, this guy's just waiting here. Or drive I'm not sure. um, I just want to show you when I'm here at um, like slippery surface and I'm I want to accelerate out the corner you know so I'm just right here like say I want to get on this road and I'm doing let's say not full throttle but you no know, strong acceleration out of a corner when I have front wheel drive only that would mean that the car steers me somehow but I want to steer the car so that's the thing but here, how much torque is being transported to the rear and how does this real differential in the front, which we get with the um, M235i work? Is it, you know, correcting this issue of a front wheel driven platform when we have the all-wheel drive, which is going front plus rear? What will happen? Let's see. Oh, excellent. Did you see like how calm the steering remained? And again, slippery ground here, that's really good. So indeed, the two things, all-wheel drive that is sending me torque to the rear wheels and the front differential doing a good job to reduce this effect. Of course, again, a rear-wheel driven platform will still behave differently, but they did all they could to reduce the difference between those. A very good handling. The adept suspension together with the 18-inch wheels also doing a good job. It is a sporty and crisp ride, yes, all you need. It shouldn't be any rougher. So going with 19-inch wheels together with the fixed sport suspension, I would not do that because it won't make the car faster or sportier. It just will make it feel rougher and less comfortable. The question is if that's really a good thing, you know? So here, a very good setup. They really thought about when developing this car it should have 18 inch wheels and the adaptive suspension that's you know what they thought about of course it's still optional yeah because they want a little bit more money from you the m sport suspension is the standard one for this car here for the m235i so you cannot de-pick it and go for the base suspension so definitely should opt for the adaptive suspension or if you don't go for the, for this m performance model then just stick with the base suspension if you want to save some money. Having so much fun here once again. 
Well, they make some tree planting actions here. It's quite a lot of times that here in the Sintra region they have also like some uh, waste or trash um, collecting initiative and so on. Great job, guys, if one of you is watching this. So, um, you know, and even out here with, um, you know, fierce weather conditions, great job those guys are doing. So, having so much fun here again, good handling. I also can compare it to other cars again so much neutral balance in this feeling and that's what I also said with the one series there was you know a lot of criticism going away from this rear driven platform this very car of course does not have a predecessor in this <laughs> now the voice activation went on cancel um, but the head yeah good morning sorry I didn't quite hear that how are you doing Please retry or say help. No, cancel. <laughs> yeah, that's sometimes we have some weird conversation with your car when you have voice activation systems. But I don't want to miss it. It's really so cool to have these uh, voice activation systems because they make especially GPS input so much more helpful. That's really cool. So of course I couldn't really like speed it up all the way since it's like those, you know, those wet conditions here, but really enjoyed this ride here in the in, in the agile driving part it was really very cool now we're going back once again to the comfort mode and this is also changing you know when you're in a comfort mode the adaptive suspension gets a little bit softer the sports mode gets a little bit stiffer so you're also flexible you're not you know just fixed with one very setting you can change it then from, from time to time that's also pretty good so what again when you think about 3 series or 2 series if you really think about that especially our friends in the US who maybe bought 3 series so far now thinking about 2 series this one is smaller so better like for getting a parking spot for example when that's a problem and the handling is actually better it is more fun to drive this car here especially when you're like you know steering going left and right slalom because it's lighter the platform is newer um, the balance is really good and so on the only thing is when accelerating accelerating out of the corners and you have a rear wheel driven only three series then it's a little bit more fun just with this rear wheel drive with this pure rear wheel drive feeling again here with the all-wheel drive we have this does diminish the effect of being like this front wheel biased especially with the slip differential uh, so that's definitely okay and if you then compare that for example with the three series with all-wheel drive in the three series again the all-wheel drive is rear plus front here it's front plus rear but when you compare these two cars then then the difference is not that much so front wheel driven one series or two series versus rear wheel driven only three series big difference in accelerating out of the corners all-wheel drive two series to all-wheel drive three series three series all-wheel drive two series against all-wheel drive three series is not such a big difference so um, also very interesting inside the only thing is I um, mean you know comfort wise seating wise I feel a little bit better in the 3 series but we get also a little bit more into these aspects when we now head onto the motorway do some more high speed and so on um, more acceleration when we're already at speed and some assistance systems let's take a look at that motorway acceleration Stop. that was 70 kilometers to 120 kilometers an hour so pretty quick and since we are in this sport mode also a nice accompanying sound in the sport mode the tune is a little bit more sonorous and now driving 120 kilometers an hour which is about 70 miles per hour and it's reasonably silent in here so noise insulation is really good there's also um, of course this new platform here for the one series that is being shared with the two series very well done so that's pretty cool although you are in a compact platform car you don't feel like that that much because it has this elaborated sound insulation or noise insulation so that's really cool next to the sporty features we also have let's say the cruising and the assistance system features so there's an adaptive cruise control i've said at the moment for most markets this will be an option or there's an assistance system package we have a blind spot monitor 
where if someone would overtake me, there would be a flashing in the side mirror. That's a very, very helpful feature. And it's always interesting, what about the lane keeping assist? So that's the thing, you know, is it intrusive or is it okay? At the moment, this motorway is um, you know, going left and right and left again. And it's not that I would feel it's annoying or something. And that's, of course, very important. From test to test, we have those lane keeping assist. Some are really like say, oh, I want to turn that off. And some are more subtle and just do their job when they need to do it but don't annoy you that much otherwise. And I think in this case, it's doing quite a good job. So we can use this toll station for another acceleration from 40 kilometers now, let's go. And that's again, that was 40 kilometers to 120 kilometers an hour. So pretty decent here as well. And it gives me a very good all-wheel drive feeling, you know, it is a front-wheel driven platform, yes, but since we have this slip differential in the front, the real one in the M235i, and much torque is being sent to the rear wheels, maximum of course is 50-50, I really don't have this front-wheel bias feeling or something, you know. And that was really different when I was driving the 1 Series lately with the front wheel drive only, where you would hammer the throttle and really being directed by the front wheel. That is not the case when you have the all wheel drive model here for the 1 Series and both for the 2 Series. So um, that's really important, helpful to know. Let's see what the, yeah, that's the lane keeping assist. Very well done. Have you, have you seen that? So I was getting towards the side of the road and then a subtle, you know, steering input from the car itself, that's how it's supposed to be done. And, you know, for example, we recently had some uh, Mercedes system which had it by brake intervention. And then when you get off the side, it's like, wow! And it's like, <gasps> heart attack, heart attack, what happened? This was, you know, very safe and very subtle. So I think really excellent. So we need also on the motorway, the car performs very well, performance-wise, but also safety system-wise, and also from this whole refined feeling. Yes, when you think about longer motorway trips, for tall people like me and Jonas especially. Jonas is up there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hello, hello, Jonas. <laughs> no, he's right there. Um, you know, actually a 3 Series, a mid-size sedan or mid-size touring then, if you want the estate version, is a little bit more comfortable than the compact platform here, yes. Again, when you're, you know, maybe maximum 118 meters or, um, you know, smaller than that, or for example, you know, like six foot or less than six foot, then it might not be such an issue that you have really more comfort in a 3 Series comparing to a 2 Series. But if you're taller, then that's still the case. You know, for a compact segment car, you have a very decent comfort in here, that's no doubt. But again, I would go for a 3 Series if I would have like daily long motorway travels or something, or plan like long, really, really long travels. Um, other than that, of course, here you have the advantage that it's a shorter car for parking in and out and so on. And, you know, the agile handling, um, as presented to you earlier, it's really very impressive and that's the same case here on the motorway and I think you also catch it on camera that I don't have to raise my voice that much even though we have rainy conditions here today and the asphalt that we face here is actually, you know, times rough. Here for example now, here is a little bit softer and you also hear maybe that it's um, that is um, you know, more silent. So it really depends also on the asphalt. When we know, uh, the, do the often test drives on Mallorca, um, there the asphalt is really very rough usually. That's good for rainy conditions because you still have a lot of grip, but again, it sounds weird than on, on camera or something. So having a lot of fun here also on the motorway, uh, how natural and well the car performs also at the higher speeds. So indeed, driving wise, what they've done here, yet again a pleasure and considering it's a sedan and has this design building style on, on the exterior 
I still have a decent overview, you know, so I don't feel like I couldn't see what's happening behind me or, or something. So uh, I think that's totally fine with me. And last thing to cover, does it really feel different than the One Series? Well, they do share the very same wheelbase. So when I would close my eyes, could I tell? Mm, maybe a little bit. I mean, the weight balance is just a little bit different. Um, but it doesn't make the biggest difference if you compare now one series or two series. So the question is rather which building style of a car you want to have. Or of course, our friends from the US, you only have the chance to get this one. Then it's not really a question, but probably even good to know. And about the fuel economy, a realistic figure would be about 9 liters on 100 kilometers, 26 mbg US, 31, 32 mbg UK. As an average figure, you know, it will be better when you're using motorway, cruise control and so on with the 135i, where we had some cruise control, German motorway, we could even score some 7.5 liters. That is possible if you retake it slowly, that will be then, you know, more in the higher 30 mpg regions. And if you push it a little bit more, also do some acceleration tests, as we did here today, it will rather go towards 10 liters, and then of course, lower than, than just above 20 mpg. So I think this 9 liters or 26 mpg is a realistic average figure in between. And now to our conclusion for today with the BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe and especially here as the M235i. Well, it is very interesting to now have a serious competitor. A serious, serious, serious competitor. You got that right, well, man. A 2 Series competitor to the Mercedes CLA. We'll see how BMW really appears on that market. And it is a very beautiful exterior design, front and side profile. I think rear, I think you have to get accustomed to that. But in the base versions, it's a little bit less dramatic than here with the M235i, especially if you pack this shadow line where we have then the additional black wing that makes the rear a little bit more bulkish. On the interior, a superb build quality also in the base versions and we also have a nice seating choice both in US and especially in Europe where we can get this additional or optional sport seats also with the Alcantara. You have reasonable comfort, yes, but I think when you're tall you still have more comfort in a 3 Series. However, this here is smaller so you can get along in the city a little bit better and the handling is really superb. This will be the same case also for, for example, the 228i, which will be the most successful engine in the US. And even if you just go with the smallest petrol engine, you will still have a lot of driving fun. The only thing is, if you have a front-wheel drive version, which will be just a European problem, because in the US you will get it with all-wheel drive anyway, if you have the front-wheel drive version only, it's the same with than with new 1 Series. If you accelerate out of the corners, you won't have this very sporty touch. However, if you have the all-wheel drive version, they did actually a good job to reduce this front-wheel bias effect and you still have a lot of fun. And again, driving-wise and agility when you are already driving and not accelerating out of the corner is even more fun than with a 3 Series. So a very cool driving machine. And price-wise, it can be very attractive, especially if you stick with the base versions. So you have a relatively cheap BMW. Of course, it won't be cheap overall, but considering how expensive their other models are. Here, the M235i is, of course, then again, pretty expensive. If you think about the base model, you can get something like, depending on equipment, 30 to 45K dollars or euros. This one here, then rather between 50 and 60 depending on the equipment, so this will again get expensive. But of course, it's the same when you pick the CLA, for example, as an AMG. So, what do you guys think? I think it's a very interesting new competitor in this segment. Had a lot of fun driving it. And we present you all the pros and cons we could pick up today. I think the most thing we can pick up is that it's really a very neutrally, very well-balanced driving machine and still has you know, a very elegant styling, 
although it's not the biggest car. So, what do you guys think? Leave me your comments, please. Let's discuss this vehicle. Also tune in to the Mercedes CLA reviews to compare this year as a competitor. And if you are, especially in Europe, and thinking about one series or two series Grand Coupe, then you can also tune into our one series review. We also have that one as a 135i, the direct competitor, internal competitor to this one. And now, enjoy the beach together with me. Enjoy the car. Maybe just scroll back to earlier shots. <laughs> well, I'll see you next time. Bye.